Hi, I'm Scott Alberts. Uh, this is an activity uh, designed for GINs 352 that I call Platonic Teapots. So um, if by now you've read uh, the section from Plato's Republic, maybe you've watched the cartoon, you have this idea that what Plato is really interested in is this idea that things are representations of ideal forms of that thing. Let me share my screen here and we'll get to um, some of the details. So the idea is that whatever you interact with is a representation of this bigger idea. And um, Plato talks about how we get away from that ideal that, you know, the sun, which is one of his examples of a true thing, um, which you can't, you know, is there. And then the idea that you get images and you get shadows of images and even um, in the cartoon and in the thing, the idea that there are little puppets that the shadow of them is cast in front of the chained prisoners as they do that. And so again, this ideal that the idea that the ideal is what we're striving for. And while Plato was 2000 years ago, the reason why I bring it up in a class that's interested in data is because all data is in fact a shadow of a reality. All evidence is a shadow of a reality. Even what we see and hear ourselves might not be the truly true thing that Plato is talking about. And um, one way that I think maybe um, statisticians would argue with Plato, and again, he's been gone 2000 years, so we're probably not gonna argue with him very much, is the idea that you can actually achieve it. And we would say that maybe it's asymptotic, you wanna get closer or closer to the true thing, but you can never really get there. All we can do is get better and better approximations of the true, and again, that's a capital T, true. So for this activity, we're gonna use teapots and there's no super particular reason why um, we're using teapots. Um, one reason is that I own a couple of teapots. So um, I kind of like that. Um, but um, <clears throat> the other reason that I do it a little bit is that it's actually um, one of the examples that um, computer graphics people use as they try to um, measure how well um, their graphics are working because a teapot is a thing, it's part round, um, it's part pointy, it has uh, different shapes, concave and convex, it um, makes very complicated shadows. So um, teapots do have that relationship to uh, computer visualization, but also I just have a lot of teapots. So just to remind you, a teapot is a thing that you put hot water and tea in, either loose tea or a tea bag, um, <clears throat> into um, the hot water and you wait a few minutes and it steeps and then you can drink it, um, probably by pouring it into another cup. So that is sort of the function of a teapot. Um, sort of its form is uh, pretty straightforward, right? A teapot has um, usually a spout, a handle because it's hot, so you want your hand away from the hot part. It has a lid um, so that you can put things um, in it. And, um, you know, modern teapots um, we sort of think of as British, but of course they're originally from China, um, China and India being where tea really was um, grown first. Um, and of course the idea of what an ideal uh, teapot is, is something that you could argue with um, as we think about different ideas. Here's the Utah teapot, which is that computer graphics um, thing that I talked about. And the idea here is that in older graphic forms, um, you tried to make um, the teapot um, more and more accurate. And it was a measure of how good your graphics were. So anyway, that's a teapot. A couple of asides. So first of all, a tea kettle is the thing that you put on a stove to heat up with water. Um, it is different than a teapot. And one of my favorite things to point out in a mind blowing sense is that um, the song that you learned as a kid, I'm a little teapot, is really a song about a kettle because the thing that uh, whistles and steams and you pour out is uh, usually a kettle and not a teapot. Um, some of them are electric um, tea kettles. Some of them go on the stove. Um, but in those cases, again, it's a tea kettle, not a teapot. One last thing I want to mention, which I think is sort of a fun platonic aside, um, is the idea that because this class is virtual now, um, you're not going to get to touch any of the teapots. And so um, it makes me think of uh, the Magritte painting um, the treachery of images or uh, uh, Cici and pipe, the idea that he made a painting of a pipe but wanted you to be clear that this is not a pipe because it's a picture of a pipe. And of course, 
for this activity, everything you're going to see is an image because I've made videos. When I did this class face to face, I would bring teapots to class and you could pass them around and touch them and even pour water out of them and do those sorts of things. And so there's a way in which everything we're doing is already a step away from the truly true that uh, platonic ideals sort of strive for. So think about as you do that, maybe you want to adjust your scale because again, nothing is a teapot in your grasp. None of them will give you tea as you watch this video. So um, hopefully that gives you the idea. You're going to watch 10 videos of me explaining various teapots that I have or that I'm showing to you. And you're going to rate them in three categories on their form. Does it look like a teapot? On the function, can it do what a teapot does? And then an overall, how platonic ideal-ish is this thing that you're doing? So I hope you have fun with it. It doesn't take too long to do. Each of the videos about the teapot is, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute. So um, you should be able to finish this activity in a half hour or so. So um, thanks so much. And with that, I will leave you to the other videos. If I set the playlist up right, you should be able to just watch the playlist in order and see the 10 teapots come one after the other. Um, you score the teapots on that Google form. So there you go.